In this video, we will launch our sandbox environment with KDB already installed and the sample repository we're going to use for the course already checked out. And to do this, you can click the link to the sandbox from the course page and enter your email address to access. Now, if you want to run this locally instead, you can do that. You can simply access the repository on GitHub and clone it to wherever you want to. Okay, great. Once you have it opened, you're going to see something that looks like this. Now we have the file explorer on the left here. This is called Jupyter Lab. This is our sandbox hosting environment. And you can see we can open and interact with files here. We can also launch a terminal from here. So let's do that. And this is mainly what we're going to use in this course to execute our commands. So let's take a look at what's in here. And we can look inside the tick directory and see we have a load of Q scripts here. Now in this video, we won't be looking at in depth what's in each of these files just yet. That's gonna come in the later videos and modules. For now, we're simply gonna start our processes one by one following the readme instructions that we have over here. And I'm gonna just move my terminals around a little bit. You can simply do that in JupyterLab by dragging and dropping, which is handy. And I'm gonna open a few more as well. So we can just click the plus button here and then add, ask for a new terminal and I'll do another one as well. Now, the first process we're going to start is our ticker plant one. So I'll copy and paste this command here. You can see we're specifying a port in KDB and that's with this minus P command. And this is how we're able to have our key processes talk to each other via inter-process communication. So port numbers are flexible and they can be customized as needed for your system. The other thing to note is that we pass this command the variable sim, which refers to the schema file. And in our case, the schema file is simply called sim.q. So we'll just take a quick look at that as well. So we understand what's happening. So I'll just drag that up here so we can see it better. So in our schema file, we're simply defining one table called trade, and we have four columns. We've got time, sim, price and side. And in here we're defining our data types as well. So don't worry too much about this notation. We'll go into that in later modules. But for now, just be aware that this is how we're defining what our table structure looks like and what data types we'll be passing out. Okay, let's start our ticker plant. So we've taken that command from our readme file and we can see it's now launched and we're into this queue command prompt line here. Now to check if it started okay, we can run .u.w, which is an inbuilt variable, which is storing the lists of all the tables in the process and also subsequent processes that have subscribed to the ticker plant. So because we see nothing on the right hand side of the trade table name here, that means nothing's yet subscribed. Okay, the next process we need to start is our ordb. So we're gonna take that command and we're gonna launch that in our second terminal. Now, this is on port 5011. And remember, this process is the one that's saving a copy of today's data in a table. And we can see if we run this tables command, we get a list of all the tables in the process. So we've got one called trade, I'll just call that. And you can see we've got an empty table here with four columns. And these are the same columns that we specified in the sim.q file. So we haven't launched any feed handler or upstream data yet, and that's why the table is empty. Now, if we run .u.w again over here, we'll see one thing has changed. We have this integer number next to the table name, and this is our subscription from the ordb process to the ticker plant, and that's how we know it's now listening and it's hooked up. Now let's get some data flowing into our system. We are gonna do this manually for now, just for the quick start so that you can see what's happening at each step. So let's open up this feed.q script and we can execute the commands one by one. So I'll just drop that up to the top here. Now to execute this, I'm gonna start a new queue process. I don't need a port, I'm just typing in queue here and we're gonna run this line by line. So the first thing here is the hit open command and that's the connection opening to the downstream process. And we can see it's 510, which we know is our ticker plant on the left-hand side. So if we run that, now then we're gonna generate some dummy data using this line of code that's commented out on line eight. 
This is just some cute code that creates a table two rows in length with the columns time, sim, price and side. Now you might remember this is the exact schema that we have defined in sim.q and it's important that these schemas match. That's really important. Otherwise you're going to get a mismatch in your data that you're sending in and your schema that you have defined. Okay, I'm going to run this line of code again. Don't worry too much about notation. We'll be talking about exactly how this is what's happening and what's going on here in a future video. But for now, we run that and we check, check the trade table and we can see we now have two rows in our table. If we run it again, we've got another two dummy rows in our table. So we're effectively capturing live data at this point. So great, what happens next? Well, typically, as I mentioned in the previous video, when we get to the end of the day, we save today's data to the HDB process. So let's start a HDB process on, um, I think it's port 5012. Yeah, we're going to start this one next. So there we have a few more terminal windows open just so that we can run some more processes. So we're going to take our next line here. Remember, we didn't run this one here. We ran it manually instead for now. So this is the HDB line. Again, we're passing it SIM and also port 5012 next. Now, if we look here, we don't have a trade table yet in this process. And that's because we haven't run the end of day scenario yet. So that we're not waiting around for hours for the end of the day, we're going to fake it on our ticker plant by manually executing the code that does this behavior. So it's a function call dot u dot end of day. And let's run that. So if we have a look at our trade table, we can see that we now have the four rows of data in there as well. We can see on our ordb, our trade table is now empty, which is what we'd expect because we clear out the memory of the ordb at the end of the day that so that it'll be ready for tomorrow's data ca capture. And we can also see we have this variable u.d and this is saving the current day. So we can see we've now increased by one day from the 15th to the 16th. Now we can also look at this directory structure on disk to see what's happened. So we can see we have this folder called sim and inside here we've got one day, which is the 15th. We've got the sim file and in here we have our table trade and then the four columns inside. Now there's a few other things here I haven't mentioned yet, um, like sim and the structure of this. We will see that again later on. But for now, we can see that the, holistically at a high level that the end of day process has happened and our data is now on disk successfully. OK, great. Nearly there for the quick start. We just have two more processes we're going to run. One is our real time subscriber. And for this one, we've told the process to save a second table called latest SIM price, which is going to keep a record of the latest price for each symbol. Now, this is just a toy example to show the functionality of the real time subscriber, but we will be creating more advanced analytics that are truer to what you'd find in a real life in a later module. So for now, let's start it up. And we can have a look at what's defined on it. So we have the trade table again. There's no data in it quite yet. Let's also have a look at this table called latest SIM price. And this is a table we're expecting to populate when we get new rows of data. So let's add some more data. Put two rows in. Let's do some six rows here. So we've got six rows here. We see the trade tables on the RGB and it's also all the real the real time subscriber here. Now you can see we've got multiple rows for this symbol meta. We've got three rows for that and two for Microsoft. So if we look at our latest sim price table, you can see we've only got one row for each symbol. And that's what we've told our logic to do in our real time subscriber. We only want to keep the latest one. And you'll see if we run this again and we have uh, we've got a new symbol that we didn't have before. We can see we get one more row added on. 
okay, this is real-time streaming analytics in action. And in practice, this might allow a client who wants to see the last price of a specific symbol a lot quicker than querying the raw trade table, especially for huge volumes and velocities of data. Now, while a select statement over that raw data might be performant early in the day, for example, as data volumes increase throughout the day, this feature of having your real-time subscriber cache that latest price value for each SIM provides a much more consistent performance and experience for users all day long. Okay, now we're at the final process and this is our gateway one. So let's launch this one here. Okay, so what is this one doing? So over here, we've defined a function called getTradeData, which is clever enough to figure out if we have any matching data from either the ORDB or the HDB and retrieve it back. So let's call it. Now we pass it three parameters, a start date, an end date, and a list of symbols that we want it to return. So if we search for meta, we see we get four rows back. Now let's just do another end of day to see this really taking action. So we can see if we run .u .end of day again, back on the ticker plant, we have a look again at .u.d. We've gone forward one day to the 17th and we can see our trade table on our HDB now has a lot more rows. So if we go to our gateway process and we run this get trade data again, we get the four rows. You can see the date has now gone on by one day and we can just do that again, load in two rows, run our end of day and we should see we get some new rows down with a new date. And we didn't need to know the port number for either the ORDB or the HDB and we weren't concerned with where the data was. Obviously we have a wide data range here and you could limit that if you wanted to as well. So that's it. That's our very basic KDB architecture up and running. Do try the quiz at the end of this module to test your knowledge before moving on to the rest of the modules.